Hello and welcome back to our DIY van build series. This van I brought home the day after Christmas in 2016, which makes the van and the build inside over five years old now. So there's a ton of YouTube channels out there, more every day, that are showing you how to put one of these vans together. But what you don't see is them talking about how their products have held up and how their methods of putting this all together, how it's held up over the years. You don't know if things lasted a few days or a few months. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna take you through all the major components of this build and I will show you how ours is held up. And in some cases, uh, there are things I would do differently today. And there are products that, different products that I might use today. So let's dive into that and uh, see how this van has done over the last five years. The very first modification we made to this van was the installation of a CR Lawrence T-Vent window on the driver's side for ventilation. We chose this window primarily because it looks like a factory passenger van window and not an aftermarket RV window. The two flaps in this window can be opened and screens keep bugs out. We would never buy a window without integrated screens. Another nice feature is that these can be used when it's raining as water is deflected away from the opening. There are two downsides to this window. One is CR Lawrence customer service is non-existent at best. Second, quality control is spotty, and while this isn't the case with every window, one of our flaps does not close the same as the other. At the end of the day, we would likely install these windows again, but we would probably also consider the AMA windows, as they maintain the factory appearance as well. The downside is it may not be usable in the rain in the same way the CR Lawrence is. While on the subject of windows, we're using magnetic window covers from Quest Overland. These are handmade in Oregon State by a family-owned business, and the quality is excellent. They provide blackout function for sleeping, and the insulation inside the shades reduce heat transfer, keeping the van cooler in the summer and keeping the heat inside in winter. These have two optional magnetic flaps that allow use of the Sierra Lawrence window vents, even when the shade is deployed. If you go to ourcaravan.com and follow the link, we have a coupon code to save money on these shades. I'll also drop a link in the description down below. Finishing up on windows, we also installed some 10 by 36 inch bunk windows made by Hair. These provide additional light and ventilation in the van without reducing privacy in the sleeping area. We like being able to open these windows when we're away from the van as the opening is too high and too small for anyone to gain access. These windows also come with screens. Our next project was installation of a vent fan. We chose the Maxair 10 speed fan for its great reviews. We haven't had a single issue in five years of use. It's still quiet and moves a good amount of air. We used a plastic adapter plate to mate it to the roof of our van, as well as some aluminum strips to spread out the clamping force of the screws. Finally, we used self-leveling die core to seal it. It's ugly stuff, but it's the industry standard and literally no one ever sees it except for in this YouTube video. We would use the same fan today and install it in the same way today. After five years in our very hot climate, the lap sealant is finally starting to show its age. While it has never leaked a drop, it's probably about time to scrape it off and apply a fresh layer of decor. Of course, you can see the entire install process on our YouTube channel or by following our how-to article on ourcaravan.com. With the bulk of the hole cutting now done, it was time to move on to insulation and noise reduction. We used a butyl mat as a panel dampener to reduce noise attenuation and make this big shell sound less tinny. We then used 3M Thinsulate insulation throughout the van to help maintain temperature inside. Without a doubt, there's not a single other product we would even consider for use in a van. These vans, even brand new, they leak like a sieve through the body side moldings, door handles, pretty much every body penetration. Thinsulate is hydrophobic, meaning it will not absorb water. It's also the insulation you'll find inside of most high-end outdoor clothing. Today we're pulling off a wall panel to observe how the insulation is faring after five years. What we found was a lot of dust coming up through the weep holes in the bottom of the van and through various penetrations, and a few small trails where water has carried the dust down the panel. However, there's no evidence of any sort of contamination of the insulation, and aside from being dusty, it's doing its job. Quite simply, we wouldn't use any other insulation. If you go to ourcaravan.com, 
we have information on how much that's let to order for your various wheelbase ProMaster Transit or Sprinter van. Next, we installed our S-Bar diesel heater. Hands down, this is our favorite feature of the van. We can take this van anywhere, anytime, with complete disregard to the weather. Ours is installed in the passenger side seat base. It has a thermostatic control. Uh, it pulls fuel off the Sprinter's diesel fuel tank, and it barely uses any battery power for the fan. In five years of travel, it has never had so much as a single hiccup. While the install is on the technical side, we've got you covered there. Our install video actually has over a quarter million views. Ours can raise the temperature inside the van at a rate of almost a degree a minute. This is a must have for us. So if it seems like so far that I've been happy with my product choices, you'd be correct. However, hang in there because I promise you there are some things in this van that have given me some issues. There are some components that um, are much more advanced now that are a better way to go today in 2022. And there are also some design choices that I've made that haven't worked out as well as expected. So hang in there, it's coming. Still on the good choices list is this Scopama rock and roll seat. It is excellent. I went to the trouble to import this seat from the United Kingdom because there were no pull tested seats with three point shoulder belt belts available at the time in the US. Thankfully that has changed as we now have a US partner importing these seats into the US. I'll put that info down below. This seat was one of the most expensive components in the van, second to the electrical system. My child rides in a car seat and her safety is something I can't put a price on. The three panels of the bed fold in various orientations, offering a bed that's a little over six feet long and it can form a chase lounge pointing either forward or back as the two ends of the bed can be reclined and held at any position. For example, when watching movies on our LED projector, we face the rear and two people can occupy the front seats for a neat theater effect. Our seat slides on rails, which offers a driving position like a sedan, and then we can push the seat all the way to the rear of the van for a truly unique open layout that's not matched in many other vans. We also built storage into the base of our seat. Sleeping comfort is what I would describe as good, but it's not as cushy as your bed at home. There are topper cushions available thanks to the Volkswagen Eurovan crowd, but I sleep well enough that I haven't found the need. We're super happy with the seat, and if you combine this with a high mount bed, you'd have seating and sleeping for four in a short wheelbase fan, and that's pretty unique. While putting in our seat, we also worked on the floors. Uh, the floors and this rail system had to be integrated together, and we chose to use this vinyl product. And this is a Earthscapes um, branded vinyl. And I have to say, I absolutely love the aesthetic of this. Um, it's just got, it's got a certain vibe to it and the colors in the vinyl, it just matches up well with everything else we have going on in here. And it's also cool to see that many of you have located the same product and it's neat to see a bunch of other vans running around with the same flooring in it. Um, it has held up well, but there are some other products that, oh, I mean, I love the way it looks, but I'd have to give some strong consideration for another product. So let me show you, it's, the floor is in five years of use. You know, remember I've got a kiddo too and kids aren't the easiest on stuff. And it looks really good. But a couple mistakes, this one was a bad one. This is a gouge. And what happened, I was working on the van and I had the entire countertop not bolted down, completely forgot about it. First corner I went around, it came crashing down and it actually cut through a window shade and did this, but at the same time, the other side hit that cabinet door and I had to completely refinish it. So, I mean, it gouged wood, it gouged that. That was a huge mistake. I don't think anything would have survived that. The other thing is it's got a puncture. I dropped a cordless screw gun with the screw head pointed down and it poked into the floor, but 
I've made that same mistake in my kitchen with laminate and it did worse damage. So I would say that it's somewhere between okay and good on the longevity spectrum, but um, if doing it today, I would definitely look into a product called Marmoleum. It may not have the same aesthetic and look as the floor that I have now, but I think that it's probably the most durable stuff that you can get. So love the floor, but also consider Marmoleum. All right, next up is our electrical system. So our electrical, it is the smallest and most compact system that I have personally seen in a van. Doesn't mean smaller ones don't exist, but I certainly haven't seen it. This is everything. And so this has a 200 amp hour lithium battery down on the bottom, an inverter charger on the top. Some of our fused DC sources here, our switches for the inverter and to kill the entire battery system, our solar charge controller, and then uh, some of our DC breakers. And there's some other things going on in here related to the BMS battery management system. But uh, let me just cut to the chase. The electrical system itself is, is amazing. Um, we, we have a 300 watt solar panel on the roof and in five years of travel, it has met our needs almost 100% of the time. There's only one time where we needed to use our backup charging system off the alternator. Solar has covered all of our uses, which is amazing. Um, we've been able to run everything that we need to run. Um, we have plenty of capacity. So back in early 2017, when I designed and started building the system, there was very little information out there about uh, lithium batteries and camper vans. And there were really only a couple of battery choices unless you wanted to build your own custom battery. So um, things I would, I would do things differently today. I would pick some different components. So let's talk about that. So this battery is a GBS branded battery. And back then the BMS was separate. So here's a computer that runs these big contactors down here and it disconnects loads and charging sources through basically manual through those big contactors. It does it mechanically. And that's not how it's done today. There's much better ways of doing it today. Um, a lot of the batteries have built-in BMS systems, so it saves a lot of complexity and um, wiring and everything else. So we would do our battery differently. Um, we've also had problems with our battery. This one has been replaced twice. So first time uh, we were in Arizona, no, we were in Utah, and the battery just stopped working. And luckily I was able to narrow it down to a board that went bad. I have this great view. One thing you're not supposed to see, the battery sitting on the ground over there. So the battery was still making full voltage, but the board couldn't see it. So because it's a mechanical system, I was able to bypass the bad board and still able to use the battery, but I got nervous about what was causing the problem because it appeared that that battery had a leak. So they did warranty the battery and they gave me a new one and ran it for a while and then I had a board problem on that battery. So this is, this is not the way to go today. So there's a way today to make this battery a lot more robust and more reliable and I'm actually going to be helping a friend build one soon. But in the meantime, we would use all the same components except for the battery just because they've come so far. Okay, quick electrical system overview. So that box back there runs everything. As for heater, we've got dimmable lights in the overhead. Uh, we've got USB ports and we've got lights in the doors and we have plugs out back and we've got a microwave in here and we've got an induction cooktop that we cook on. We've got water pumps for the sink in here. We've got a refrigerator and We've got more up here. These are the inverter controls, and this tells you the state of charge on the battery. But one thing that's unique is that you saw that there's a distribution block back here, right here. And that has the DC fused hookups for most of the things in the rear of the van. But to avoid having to run all the cabling back to here, there's wiring that goes through the floor. 
And back behind the galley, there's another fuse block. So it makes it really easy to hook things up because now it's all localized and it's all labeled. And there's also a line that goes up in the overhead and there's more here. So I don't know why more people don't do it this way um, because it really simplifies wiring. Another unique feature is that I've got an emergency system here <laughs> with instructions to myself how to use it. This van has an auxiliary battery under the hood, an AGM battery. And if in the event that this whole system dies, you know, which as I've said has happened before, all I have to do is grab these two leads here, plug it into these power poles that I have set up up here. I first have to disconnect the electrical for the lithium system. And then I can run everything off of the Mercedes battery in a pinch. So that's a little bit unique. So anyway, there's an overview of the system. So in short, the electrical system is amazing. I would make all of the same choices. I would just choose a different battery. And there's a further discussion about this on rcaravan.com with wiring diagrams and a discussion on how we would do it today in 2022. After getting electrical done, it was time to focus on cabinets. And trust me, I am not a cabinet maker. In fact, I don't even do that well with working with wood. So I had to find a better solution. And I found that solution through use of this aluminum material. So when you open up our cabinets, what you find is this extruded aluminum that's just bolted together at 90 degree angles. And it forms basically the skeleton like an endoskeleton for the cabinets and you basically build out the structure the way that you want um, when you bolt it together it's a perfect 90 degrees which you don't really get that when you're working with wood and then you just cover it in your wood of choice so it makes these installations light because for example you just have the aluminum frame and then i've uh, basically just used quarter inch plywood on the sides there's no backs or bottoms or dividers in these that really save the weight. And it's super strong. So basically the downside of this material is that it costs more money than wood. But you have all of this stuff, you know, with my water system is in here. There's a lot of weight in water there and a lot of stuff in the drawers and refrigerators. I don't want this stuff hitting me or my child if I get into an accident. So. I feel the cost and weight savings is well worth it. Now, when you look at the lower cabinet, you're seeing the same thing. You're seeing, as you open the drawers, you're seeing square metal bolted together. And it just creates a really good foundation for building cabinets. I've done a lot of videos on this stuff, so go check my channel. Go check out rcaravan.com. Tons of discussion on how to build this material. And you may also not know that we sell some cabinet kits that are already pre-cut and milled and ready for you just to put together. So that really helps with reducing your design time and you can put it together pretty quick. So take a look at rcaravan.com for that. To summarize the cabinetry, if I were to build this van all over again today, I would use the exact same techniques. I would use the 15 series, the one and a half inch, uh, extruded aluminum to frame out the cabinets. I've been really happy with the bamboo. It looks great. I mean, after five years, I don't think there's a nick anywhere in it. Um, I would use all the same cabinet hardware. So everything from the lifts and hinges and the latches that secure the drawers, um, the black laminate countertop on top, I mean, has held up great. The finishes, the quality of the sink and faucets, all of it, I honestly would not change a thing. Next up is upholstery. A lot of people do the upholstery they, before they put in the cabinetry, and in my case, I wanted to have um, the wall panels removable, so I actually built most of the cabinetry first. So the wall panels are a 5.2 millimeter plywood that was cut to fit. And then I've got eighth inch foam glued to the plywood. So it gives it a little bit of, I don't know, plushness, if you want to call it that. And then it's got a tweed fabric over that. 
and um, I have never done upholstery work and I came out amazing. I basically just wrapped the upholstery around the corners and glued and stapled it on the back and it's five years old now and it's honestly perfect. We haven't, <laughs> I've got a kid, I've, got, I've had plenty of spills in this van and there isn't really a spot I can think of where there's a stain or anything else. And in fact, just to show how easy this stuff is to work with, I mean, I've got pieces that are three-dimensional or wrapped in all kinds of crazy ways, and the material just, just takes it. It's pretty easy to work with. Now, the thing I really need to emphasize here, and I think I said this in my original video, is you really need to buy the $40 gun to spray it and use the professional... Um, upholstery adhesive. Everywhere where I use that, it has held up perfect. And in fact, if you try and remove the fabric from the wood, it will actually tear the wood out. That is how strong the fabric adhesive is. There are places where I got lazy and I used the 3M90 spray glue, spray adhesive in a can, and I've had very mixed results. So one place where I used it is in this overhead cab shelf that we built and it's still holding up fine there. But some other places like these window surrounds, I just, I didn't get it out. And it's, this has been re-glued now like three times. And so it's lifting, it's lifting off. So if you're gonna go to the trouble to make wall panels and you want them to last, use the good glue. Okay, while on the subject of wall panels, I'm having a problem here. So you might see these strange little clips behind the scenes here. And I had used these marine upholstery clips to keep the wall clipped in. And you can see that it's, it's now pulled away from the wall. And that held up for a few years and is no longer working. So the solution is going to be to pull this wall panel off and then do a curved brace on the inside to get it to form to basically the wall. Now, most of these vans, people are using high mount beds. So there you've got stuff to push the wall panel into place, but not with this layout. So there's an idea of mine that didn't work out well. Now, thankfully, this wall panel is going to come out really easy because I use the factory headliner. So I can just, I can pop these out and it's sitting on l track down here and it will be easy to do. But there's one of my mistakes that I need to fix. But the upholstery and the methods for doing it, they worked out great. One thing I want to add to this topic is I have had great success with using the 3M90 spray glue to glue the upholstery direct to the metal of the van. And I have done that on all of these pillars, these metal pillars in the van. So those are glued direct to sheet metal and I don't think that's ever gonna pull away. Same with here, this is glued direct with 3M90 to the steel of the van. I, that's, that's just fine. The problem seems to be using the spray glue, the 3M90, to adhere upholstery to other upholstery or to the upholstery to foam and then the wood. So I thought I would add that. All right, next up is the water system. And in this van, we are using a portable five gallon container type of water system. And that's because with water outside, we don't want it to freeze on us and also I don't like the idea of drinking water out of a tank that I can't see inside. So with these water jugs, um, between trips, I can open them up, I can dry them out, I can reach down inside of them and clean them. So that's huge for us. Um, we have a separate tank for shower water and we can get into that later. But honestly, not to, not to brag, but the water system is probably one of the best things that I've designed for this van and in the way that it works. So let me walk you through it a little bit. So we have a 15 by 13 uh, zero radius stainless steel sink, um, faucet with the pullout on it, uh, soap dispenser, and then the switch for the water pump is over here on the side. And then under the sink, 
we are using two five gallon containers, but you can use as many of them as you like. Now inside the cabinet, in order to secure these, this is a lot of weight that you don't want to hit you if you were in an accident. We use this L-Track system. So it's just simply bolted to the framing. So to release it, you just click this button and then I can feed this through and the tanks are then free. Now when it's time to remove these to refill them, what you'll see are two lines using food grade tubing and connected to these, it's connected to the pump, but there's a quick releases. So when I want to disconnect, you just push a button and they pop free. There's one. Two. So this is what it looks like on the container. I spent hours looking through catalogs trying to find panel mount quick releases with check valves. So here they are. So basically I cut the spout off these and put these quick releases in place and it works great. Now one of the main assets of this is that they have a check valve built into them here. So when you disconnect, if the check valves were not there, all of the water in these lines would have drained on the floor. All the water from these hoses up through the water pump, it all would have drained out. So this prevents that from happening. The other nice thing about it is I'm using two water jugs, but let's say I was just going overnight and only needed one. I can just fill one jug with water and because this one is closed and sealed via this, I can use that one jug with no downsides. I don't need to have both connected. Now, because these lines are exactly the same length, it means that both tanks drain at the same time. So now you just take the jugs and spin off the top and you can fill them up and they can be filled pretty much anywhere but I love being able to see inside and ensure that they're clean. And it's a pretty simple system. Those that go to the tank, there's the strainer and the pump is up near the sink. So it's all contained within this box. Now I know there's hundreds of you out there using the system because I see your posts on Instagram and your comments on our write-up. So I really appreciate that. If we have inspired a project of yours, please feel free to post on Instagram and tag us. We love to see it. So to summarize on the water system, would do it exactly the same way today using all the same products. The only way to achieve a wide open layout was to use an outside shower. We built our own nine gallon shower water tank from eight inch PVC pipe. And while it works great, there's now a company that makes an 11 gallon tank to go in this location. We would purchase that instead. We use a very specific hot water heater, one of the only portable units that works at high elevation. We configured it to connect to a one pound propane bottle. A quick release port at the back of the van is connected to our PVC pipe water tank, which supplies the water. We are super happy with its function and would build the same system today. There are of course a number of other projects that we've done in this van that I'll just go over just really briefly. We have this DIY headliner shelf that we built and we found some brackets that amazingly these brackets line up uh, with the brackets on the sprinter both front and back so that you can just bolt those brackets in place so headliner shelf is great we did some audio upgrades uh, with an amp um, it works great we have a ham radio set up that was the antenna on the roof that you might have seen earlier super happy with that um, we installed some L-Track on the walls, some L-Track in the back. Uh, this actually holds our hot water heater for our external shower, speakers, lights, all that stuff would do the same today. Oh, and of course we've got a pull down projector screen and then we have a mount up here that we use to attach a projector for watching movies, but we like to hide it away. I don't want to look at that. So that is fantastic as well. On the outside of the van, nothing special. Factory wheels that are placidipped. We also installed an amp power step. When you open the doors, it comes folding down. That is fantastic. 
And then finally, this Thule folding bike rack. I love that it folds up tight against the back of the van and when you want to use it, just pull it down and you got your trays. That's about it on the outside. All right, that's it for today. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, if I were building a van today, um, I would definitely want to know how these various products and install techniques are working. So now I think you've probably got a better idea. And um, for most of these things, I think that you can follow our van build series with the confidence to know that five years down the road, 10 years down the road, that um, it's still going to look and function well. So just overall, just super happy with this van build. We've had so many great memories in this thing. Um, and just looking at it today, I don't know, maybe it's just because I built it and I'm proud of it, but um, I go to van shows all the time and um, I think I can still be super proud of my work and how it came out. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, boy, if a guy like me can do it and uh, Put, some, put your time and energy into it and just take your time on these projects and you will have a nice outcome too. So I wish you the best of luck and we'll see you soon.